so then i started trading in 2007 2008 that's when the the that's not the harsh time yeah yeah that was the biggest bull market in india from 2004 2005 onwards mm-hmm. so you need to figure out a sector that is consolidating for many many years mm-hmm. okay and you, you know such uh, breakouts actually lead the trend for at least 6 to 9 months or even 12 months okay risk now correct i mean you can't take the risk later on mm-hmm. okay not taking a risk is also a risk exactly you know that is bigger risk <laughs> okay but you're into a high beta okay and then you are leverage then you are actually you know taking a suicidal decision correct hello guys my name is namandeep bhatia i'm co-founder and ceo at pickright welcome to our episode you me and finance today it's going to be a very interesting episode as two tech guys will be discussing about trading and investing in financial markets we welcome mr shivaji rao vetal our special guest today thank you i wanted to have you here thank you and uh, mr vetal he is actually a techy guy software engineer he supports uh, software for uh, electric cars department in germany and uh, he is a passionate about uh, trading as well as investing so just like me we both have a you know similar resonance of frequency similar thinking and let's hear from mr shivaji thank you thank you for inviting me so uh, i first want to have you little bit introduction about yourself okay okay great so myself shivaji i'm 40 years old i'm uh, settled in germany uh, by profession i'm an engineer and i work for electric car segment and uh, by hobby i'm a trader as well as a technical analyst okay so i started my uh, you know trading career in 2005 uh, with the ipos okay we were interested in investing in in the primary market mm. okay we were not aware of the secondary market how to buy and you know sell from the secondary market so that's how i started because of my mother being a banker so she was an investor so that's how we got introduced to the stock market okay uh, yeah so then i started trading in 2007 2008 and that's when the the that's what the harsh time yeah yeah that was the biggest bull market in india from 2004 2005 onwards <laughs> we got introduced in 2005 2008 bull market and uh, uh i i was a trader and i started trading those uh, you know the famous names reliance communication reliance uh natural resource stable ted reliance petroleum limited rpl rnrl the sr oils the names you know so and then then we st- we made we lost money uh, so that was a big crash back then hmm. so that was the a turning point for me to uh, get introduced to technical analysis okay yeah so that's how you started your trading journey yes. with technical analysis and all of course everyone first bears the losses and then the learning came absolutely absolutely so my first point of discussion with you is see i've asked this question with many financial advisor financial domain experts but they have a different vision because they coming from a financial background so i want uh, specifically discuss with this point which i'm uh, bringing just now specifically with other people who are not from financial that's why i told yeah, this episode is going to be very interesting because i want to see the other point of views so my point is first of all is trading is really a money making or money generating instrument or we should go with investing how a single individual can choose whether i should go with investing or trading suppose he is a beginner okay there is a perception now in the you know in the public that uh, people cannot make money through trading all right correct so investing is the only way to create wealth okay i also believe in creating wealth through trading okay so then you need to decide what type of trading you want to do okay if you are a working guy and you want to get into day in day out trading or intraday trading that's very stressful job i would say you know please avoid that okay, okay. you know me being in the industry i understand you know what a sort of uh, you know effort it takes uh, to you know track markets during working hours mm-hmm. and uh, you know when you lose money and then it's a different uh, mental pain again as well correct so what i say is uh, if you're a working guy better avoid the intraday part as well as the day in day out you know you buy today or you tell you know set very short you, duration yeah, yeah. that should have it should be avoided in my opinion okay okay you can trade obviously mm-hmm. maybe with a view of 3 months 6 months or even 9 months mm-hmm. that can keep you less stress okay. okay so 
how do you trade th those kind of things? You know, you need to pick the you know that kind of setups in the charts. Mm -hmm. Okay, wherein you can estimate the duration of the trend, and you can also uh, estimate the uh, the length of the trend. Mm -hmm. Okay, so to what percentage you want to write the trend. So based on that, you can still trade on. For example, if you look back last year when I was here in India, I was talking about uh, the Nifty PSE. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, that sector was not participating for 14, 15 years. All right. So then comes the you know great breakout in in uh, the March uh, this year, last year itself. Mm -hmm. That move has lasted for at least you know 10 months. Okay. Correct. You know in that uh, 10 months the index has doubled. Exactly. Okay. So you need to figure out a sector that is consolidating for many many years, mm -hmm. okay? And you you know such uh, breakouts actually lead the trend for at least six to nine months or even twelve months, okay? With that sort, uh, I think you can play those moves, mm -hmm. but you need to be early in the game, uh, you know, first move advantage, what we say. Mm -hmm. So you can't be riding the move in between, or you can you can't be entering. Uh, in between the moves, okay. It's very important for you to enter at the breakout points. That's where the risk reward is good, and the trader can actually, you know, make good money without, you know, stress. So, wealth creation is possible, absolutely. Uh, but again, it all depends on what kind of trade you want to take. But if you're taking a, you know, intraday or, uh, you know, a very short term trades, mm -hmm. then I would say yes, it's very difficult to create a wealth. Okay, fair enough. So uh, the conclusion is, if you are a working guy and you cannot manage extra time during the market hours, then please avoid very, very short duration intraday and like PTST and STBT calls. It all depends on market volatility. And uh, uh, in such cases, you might not be able to handle the stress along with your uh, working professions. The other point is, see, I uh, when I started the pick right in early 2018, I met a guy who, who, who is a very old guy and he is a part of uh, NSC founding members. So he told me this statement that you do whatever you want, you cannot beat the investor's return. So if you're a long term investor and you stay with the market patiently, it's okay to, you know, churn your portfolio, rebalance your portfolio uh, as and when required, maybe once in a month or once in a quarter. But uh, if you stay with the market for long term, you can, of course, be very, very, very more profitable as compared to a trader. Mm. A trader in a long term cannot generate that amount of that amount of money. Okay. So, what's your point of view regarding that? Okay. Well, uh, that's again an interesting topic. Okay. So, a trader has this advantage that's called leverage. Correct. Okay. So, if you can uh, take the advantage of the leverage, you mm. can actually beat the investor return. Okay. But then there's a side effect also. I, right? uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So. Then you have to be very, very uh, cautious in terms of what kind of leverage you have to take. Mm -hmm. For example, you are getting into a stock or a sector that is low beta. Mm -hmm. Then you can actually have a leverage. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you're into a high beta. Okay, and then you are leveraged. Then you are actually, you know, taking a suicidal decision. Correct. Right. So even if you look at the investor point of view, actually, you know, too many investors are diversifying their portfolio by big margin. Okay, Correct. it's. I would say too much of diversification. Okay, that don't yield in you know great return in my opinion. Okay, if you ask me, I'm I'm less investor, more of a trader. Okay, I actually leverage uh, in a low beta sector. For example, you take uh, you know PSE last year, and some of the PSU banks and the real real estate. Uh, you know, last year you know they were at a great point after many years of consolidation. Uh, the leverage at that point in time it was less risky. Okay, so with the leverage, even if you you know ride uh, the move for fifty percent, mm. okay, if if you have a two x three x leverage Correct. in MTF these days is a quite popular thing right now, if not future. Okay, I think uh, you can actually beat the investor returns in my opinion, okay. uh, but uh, again that takes a lot of uh, you know. Uh, discipline mm. and you have to time the market and the sector pretty well Correct. Uh, so uh, again uh, it's it's individual uh, take but in my opinion yes it's possible to meet but coming back to this point leverage so mm. leverage is a good thing if you're utilizing it in the right way yeah. of course then you can beat the investors profit yes what if it, things go south and uh, somebody is already taking leverage and things are going you know downside yeah so my my question to you is 
दिस इज ओके इफ वंस आई लर्न द मार्केट वंस आई नो द बेसिक्स और मे बी इन अ लेमन लैंग्वेज आई कैन से वेन आई ऑलरेडी फिगर आउट की वॉट थिंग्स आर वर्किंग फॉर मी इफ समबर इज बिगनर एंड फॉर बिगनर आई मीन पीपल हु स्टेज इन मार्केट फॉर टू ईयर्स दे आर ऑल्सो समटाइम्स बिगनर्स दे डोंट नो सो फॉर मी बिगनर इज दैट गाय हु डोंट नो मच अबाउट द यू नो टेक्निकलिटीज हाउ टू रीड चार्ट एंड ऑल दोज थिंग इवन इफ ही नोज दिस थिंग ही हैज नो आइडिया हाउ टू मैनेज इज प्रपोर्शन ऑफ कैपिटल सो दोज गाइज फॉर मी एम कैटेगराइजिंग एज अ बिगनर सो फॉर दोज गाइज what 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 your you know suggestion whether they should choose trading or investment and what is the proportion they can choose during this learning period at least okay so if you are a beginner mm-hmm. okay so i would say you should be a 1995 percent investor 1995 investor yeah if you are a beginner mm-hmm. okay trading is a tough job mm-hmm. and it takes lot of mental strength correct as well as uh, you know test of knowledge mm-hmm. okay it tests your conviction also you need lot of courage in trading part mm. uh, if you are leveraged in trading and that's a different ball game again okay right. so in my opinion you start with the investing part okay again uh, you know my theory is like uh, you know don't diversify too much okay look if you look at 2004 2008 bull market okay mm. that was a kind of secular bull market so everybody was uh, you know rally mm. okay you put money in any sector everybody was going up okay now it is a different case Correct. okay if you look at uh, you know last couple of uh, months you know you know the the real estate the psc sector the infra yeah. you know they have moved up mm-hmm. okay if you take the uh, you know it it's quite lagging if you take some of the private banks they didn't do well so again uh, you need to be very very specific in terms of choosing the sectors also Correct. that's why now the market dynamics have changed mm. so if you're investor you need to pick a stock that is a leader correct or you need to pick some uh, uh, you know sectors they are leaders mm-hmm. so then it is actually uh, helping you to make money efficiently mm. or your money investor can grow you know in a uh, in a much uh, better way okay correct uh, so what i would say is start becoming an investor in the initial stage mm-hmm. don't diversify too much mm-hmm. look at the sectors which are uh, you know leading mm-hmm. okay that you can do it through rs studies or you compare the index or you do the trend analysis of the individual se- uh, sectors mm-hmm. you know i I've, i've discussed lot of uh, uh, you know concepts during my you know meetups in india in couple of months okay so you you can actually do that mm-hmm. and then you invested in you know let's say 10 12 or 15 stocks don't invest in too many stocks okay. and then comes the allocation uh, you know what percentage you want to allocate yeah. and then sector also matters as i said not every sectors will do well so you need to be very very choosy so that's when you actually uh, you know make good amount of return so okay. be an investor in the initial stage mm. pick few sectors or pick few stocks so that you can at least track mm. and you have a good allocation to generate a good amount of return okay great so uh, with this discussion you you actually a uh, uh, lot of place you have told that sector is the main key exactly we have to pick the sector very very cautiously with exactly. all the study exactly so this brings to my next question yeah. before that so my next question is of course key uh, considering this 2024 election yeah. and considering the existing rally mm. since last one year the market already moved so much yeah so which sector you prefer but mm. before coming to this question let me just uh, ask you one uh, weird question yeah. apart from this you know yeah. investment yes. so uh, you said ki asset allocation is important yeah. so 95% is 90 to 95% i also agree to that so yeah. my numbers is around 90% in investment yeah. and 10% in uh, trading yeah. and when i'm trading i'm only putting that money which i can you know consider it as gamble yeah yeah so which I, i don't mind losing that 10% money so this is my learning cost and i can put that once i learn it then i can start allocating more money towards trading yeah, yeah. and removing from investing yeah. so this 90% investing and you said ki don't diversify too much yeah for equity i understand it should be you know fair enough to have a 15 stocks yeah. different sectors 15 yeah. stocks maybe yeah. four five sectors yeah. that is a good uh, proportion yeah. Yeah. apart from equity yeah is there anything where user can invest uh, in this financial world honestly uh, you know you have uh, 
commodities as well mm-hmm. maybe a gold or silver mm-hmm. okay if the trend is looking good mm-hmm. definitely you should look to add some more positions over there mm-hmm. uh, other from uh, uh, you know apart from that i think uh, you know you don't have any asset class i mean i mean equity is obviously high risk and high return correct and if you ask me uh, you know i would i would not put my money in bonds i would not my you know put my money in in you know, securities uh, the government bonds or something mm-hmm. like that so majorly i would uh, go with the equities and maybe sometimes commodities okay so that would be my approach and why you are not comfortable with bonds and other things no uh, i mean i don't get a great return okay, okay. Has, has, since you belong to that category who already learned the trading who yeah. already know the investing yeah. so for you it might be different allocation yeah. but for some young guy who is just now starting yeah. what is your suggestion for him to allocate at least not bonds and all you can uh, give a ballpark figure for roughly debt and equity uh, okay it, it can be i mean it again depends on the age mm-hmm. factor as mm-hmm. you know okay if you are young between mm-hmm. 25 to 30 or 35 i think you should allocate 80% in mm-hmm. my opinion mm-hmm. i mean if you don't take a risk now correct i mean you can't take the risk later on mm-hmm. okay not taking a risk is also a risk exactly you know <laughs> that is bigger risk <laughs> that's the biggest risk yeah. so i think if you are in between 25 and 35 i think you should uh, you know take 80 85% exposure to equities okay and maybe you can take uh, gold or maybe fd hmm. or maybe some other asset class hmm. if you are not comfortable okay. with the equities yeah yeah great yeah so now let's come to the next question as you mentioned that sector is the key yeah so for next coming year yeah as i said considering all the cases yeah. market rally elections yeah. bjp is already winning yeah. there's a chance that bjp government can come yeah. and uh, government is very bullish about infrastructure growth especially in this even in interim budget we have saw that government is allocating a good sources in that uh, uh, electric cars and infrastructure sure. what's your pick best two sectors which user can pick uh i'm i'm very much bullish on financials okay that includes nbfcs mm-hmm. as well okay maybe we will discuss on the chart later on mm-hmm. uh, uh you know about the private bank index and then uh, in the fin- uh, nifty fin- uh, financial services mm-hmm. okay that is one sector which is actually looking uh, very exciting with uh, good risk reward at the current juncture and uh, the other sector is psu bank index again that is financial Uh, yeah but again it's public and the private yeah. so i'm just categorizing as uh, two different uh, you know sectors here okay uh, that's where i see a good uh, uh, you know rally in mm-hmm. next one one and a half year mm-hmm. okay uh, maybe i'll go with fertilizers mm-hmm. okay uh, and some of the infra stocks okay yeah. Go- government infra is yeah uh both private as well as the government yeah mm-hmm. yeah okay so those those are looking quite interesting right now mm-hmm. and if you look at real estate and the pses mm-hmm. okay the public sector enterprises we put it that way okay they are actually a little bit stretched right now i don't think we have lot much you know uh, rally left in 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 that sector maybe it can go sideways or consolidate for a couple of months mm-hmm. right so uh, i would actually uh you know skip that sector maybe there are some pockets uh, you know particular stocks you know um, they they look quite interesting but as a whole sector i would like to avoid at the current juncture mm-hmm. yeah yeah maybe if you want to show it with charts yeah okay. yeah we'll have some discussion with the chart as well sure <laughs> okay great And so let us discuss couple of sectors which is mainly towards the finance part mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. uh if you if you look at the uh, this is nifty private bank index okay okay this was the 2021 top okay mm. this was close to 2022 top okay and we had a breakout at this point and then the retest was done if you see the bottoms are rising okay now with the recent fall mm-hmm. you know we have a great retest of uh, this pattern okay mm-hmm. and this whole 22 months consolidation has resulted in a breakout or uh, breakout on the upside okay mm-hmm. and if you actually calculate the you know the tar- targets so it has a 28000 target so okay. the private bank index okay so i think in the next you know 6 uh, to 8 months okay this private bank index has a great potential so if you look at uh, the elections or the post election part i think this sector can still do well uh, you know this can be led by icici and the uh, axis probably uh you know the cotec and the hdfc app, you know both have to wake up mm-hmm. okay because they have the highest weightage correct in the private bank index and then the other stocks like uh, the federal bank or the bandhan bank are still consolidating so i think this one sector is, which is looking very exciting to me <laughs> uh, with a view of 6 to 8 months <laughs> or even more 
Mm -hmm. uh, considering the elections as well, mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, this sector can offer a great risk reward from this point. Okay. Okay. And if you look at the uh, the Nifty f uh, FinServe, okay. Um, let me let me check the Nifty FinServe. So uh, Nifty FinServe. Uh, if you look at the Nifty FinServe, so it has quite similar structure. Okay. okay. Um, and this is again across to 21 and 22 tops. Mm -hmm. Okay. The all the financial services like the Bajaj uh, FinServe mm -hmm. or the Finance or the NBFCs, okay, mm -hmm. which are part of the FinServe. Okay. Maybe you, you can go to the NSE website and check the components of this mm -hmm. uh, index. And that is also has a similar structure. The bottoms are going up with a really great retest and you have a good weekly candle as well. With today's move, you can see there was a nice jump in the private bank led by ICS and Axis. Uh, so I think these two sectors, financial services, including NBFCs and the private banks, mm. have a great potential uh, for next couple of uh, months. Okay. And one uh, sector which I already discussed, you know, in, in, uh, in the last couple of months, that is the Nifty PSU Bank Index. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you look at uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, the the bigger bigger picture. Okay, mm. this is actually a 2010 and 2023 breakout. Okay. So this sector is actually breaking out after 14 years, mm. th you know, 13, 14 years. Okay, even if you look at the range of uh, this whole sector. Okay, the, the thousand points was on the downside and uh, uh, upside it was around 5,400. So you have an upside of 10,000. Still pending. Yeah. So. This index can surprise. I think, uh, you know, it has already given a breakout. Uh, could be, a, you know, sideways in uh, the smaller float, uh, yeah. you know, uh, the uh, the smaller banks. Yeah. Okay. But the large banks like SBI, Bank Baroda and the Kendra Bank, uh, including the PNB, uh -huh. they can still do well and and the leadership has to come from there. And I, I do believe, and uh, you know, these four large banks, okay, the heavyweights, including the SBI, the, they can lead the Nifty PSU Bank Index. I think over next 6 to 12 months, this index still looks good. Uh, as, as I said uh, in in, an, in our earlier discussion, okay, you know, entering at the right point is the key Correct. for a trader or an investor. So the breakout was at 5400. Uh, recently, it did 7000. Yeah. Okay, it was roughly 1600 points more. Okay, that was around 30% uh, in the index. Correct. Okay. Uh, still, uh, you know, the rally has just started here. Uh, this is similar to the PSU bank, uh, PSE sector, what it has done last year. Okay, I think there is still an upside of another 3000 points uh, from here with 6 to 12 months views. So these three sectors are looking quite well. Hmm. Okay, um, maybe we, ca uh, we can look at individual stock, but that is not a part of the discussion. Correct. So I think uh, they offer a great potential here hmm. and I, I'm, I'm quite bullish on these sectors. Okay, yeah. fair enough. So this brings me to another point. Yeah. So uh, keeping, you know, elections in mind. Mm -hmm. So government was telling since long ago that uh, India will become soon 5 trillion economy. India is a developing country and most favorite investor, you know, hub globally. Mm -hmm. And we, of course, recently uh, government releases a chart showing China degrowth and India's growth. Yeah. So of course, it this is there is no debate about that, you know, uh, foreign investors are more interested in India. But will it going to be for next two, three years, five years, like just like government is telling that for next five years, India will become the top most preferable choice of investment. Is it according to you, is it really going to happen or it is just government, uh, you know, doing it for okay. elections? Okay. So uh, uh, you know, me as a technical analyst, I look at charts. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I look at the Nifty, uh, you know, in dollar terms, mm -hmm. okay, let us look at Nifty in dollar terms. All right. So you actually get uh, the USD norms here. Okay. If you look at that, okay, you actually still, you know, still see a big rally in the dollar terms. Okay. Okay. The Nifty has, you know, rupee term has given a breakout at 18,800. We have rallied 17, 18% from there. Uh, whereas the Nifty 50 in dollar terms still has 15, 20% upside. Mm -hmm. Okay. That means there is a lot of inflow coming. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. so without that, obviously, the this chart cannot move up. The current growth is right. And if you look at the breakout point, mm. this happened exactly on the election result day. Okay. Okay, and if you look at the numbers on the, you know, 4th December, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's when the NPA Rajasthan, 
Correct. And uh, the Chhattisgarh results have come. Yeah. That was the trigger point in the uh, Nifty 50 dollar terms. That's when a lot of inflow has come. And I do believe uh, going forward, you know, with a little bit of consolidation here and there, okay, mm -hmm. because the index has rallied so much, mm -hmm. uh, we still see 15, 20% upside. So the inflow will be there, obviously. Okay. Uh, so technical point of view, yes, mm -hmm. there is going to be a huge inflow in India mm -hmm. for at least uh, 12 to 18 months okay. going forward. So it's like a uh, government is not just telling, even your charts are supporting the Absolutely. Sides. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, Shivaji, one more question I want to ask. Uh, there is one more sector, few stocks, uh, you know, related with oil and gas. Yeah. They specifically, just, just like you're telling BSAs and private banking, they have still potential. Yeah. So I find this Indian oil, you know, BPCL and all oil sector stocks, yeah. they have not given good growth. Although they might have given good dividends, yeah. but growth-wise, I believe ki they are stagnant since long. Yeah. So what's yeah. your point of view on that? Okay, that's an interesting uh, uh, topic right now. Okay. If you look at the IOC, BPCL and the HPCL, if mm. you just, you know, uh, add all the three stocks, mm -hmm. okay, I just customize the index here, okay, mm -hmm. uh, you get a chart here, okay, mm -hmm. now you look at the chart, this whole, uh, you know, combination of IOC, BPCL and HPCL, this is actually consolidation uh, in consolidating from 2017 till this point, okay, okay, and look at the volumes, Correct. In the last couple of months. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was a great breakout here around 800. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it has also crossed 2017 highs. Okay. So this is a breakout of six years mm -hmm. or in seven years. Okay. I think there is a great structural change. Mm -hmm. And the price is also indicating, uh, you know, uh, there is a trending move coming in these stocks, especially the oil and gas. Okay. Okay. You can also add the gain, which is also having a great uh, multi-year record mm -hmm. and the ONGC, ONGC along with course, this year. I think the three uh, IOC, BPCL, HPCL plus the Gale and the ONGC mm -hmm. as a whole pack is looking great. Okay, okay. and you, you can see that the volume is there, the price action is there and that's a seven year breakout mm -hmm. and any dip mm -hmm. uh, in all these three companies you know, going forward can be a great investment in my opinion. I think they still have 50, 60 percent upside, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, from the current current levels. But would be great if you can, you know, if you can get it on dips mm -hmm. uh, because you know on short term they are a little bit heated up. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think as a sector, if you ask me, uh, they can perform well for next two to three years, in my opinion. Okay. So they have a great, uh, you know, setup technically. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, um, you know, it can offer great uh, risk reward for. Even even for the investors. Okay, and uh, this this facts as per your charts, it is showing the similar trend. But what about the crude stability? Is the, those charts also supporting the same numbers? Okay, if you look at crude right now, okay, in the weekly charts, mm -hmm. all right. So on the downside, the sixty six dollar is the base, mm -hmm. and the, on the upside, the ninety two and the ninety five dollars is is the resistance. Mm -hmm. So it is still consolidating. Correct. It hasn't done anything to be uh, to be frank. Mm -hmm. So as long as crude stays in this range, I think uh, these companies, you know, which we discussed, the OMCs, mm -hmm. they can still do well. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I said, for short term, uh, it, they don't offer a great risk reward. I think any dips in these <laughs> oil make, uh, marketing companies, uh, I think uh, that can be, you know, backed up by the crude as well, as well and they can do well okay yeah fair enough uh one more weird question regarding this yeah please see i remember that era when you know we used to have dvds and we used to click pictures through that codec reel yeah. at that time moser beer and codec was one of the best stocks yeah but then technology shifted and uh rest is the history we know that those stocks are no more there right yeah. now yeah similarly people generally says that you know energy sector is always booming mm. always we need energy of course yeah but my point of view is, uh, uh, in recent times, Japan and US, they recently uh, get a very good breakthrough in nuclear fusion also. Uh -huh. If that part is coming, nuclear fusion, uh -huh. so that gives us a very, very, you know, uh, complete regime shift towards another source of energy. Uh -huh. Then, is it a really 20, 10 years, 20 years uh, long-term investing stocks for IOC, HPCL, ONGC like that? Or we should be worried about those things as well. Okay, if, if you're thinking for too long term, let's say 7, 8, 10 years, okay, mm. I really don't have an answer, to be very frank. Okay, mm. I would look at these stocks for next 1 to 3 years in that time frame. Mm. Okay, you make money and you get out. 
okay you never know the business changes the times change mm-hmm. the technology change and the companies can evaporate also correct okay so 10 years back mm. you know the oil marketing companies in the us were the largest companies correct you know you now you see all the tech companies like you know Intel, the, uh, google the alphabet and you know uh, you know uh, the tesla you know all these companies have done well and uh, the times have changed mm-hmm. so i think with time uh, obviously the leadership will change in the bull market mm-hmm. and uh, i would not look at these companies for next 10 years okay mm-hmm. my opinion is for couple of years let's say 1 to 3 years mm-hmm. if you make money get out you will definitely get one more sector you know keep moving from one sector to other sector to make money correct so yeah i don't think you. think too much mm-hmm. uh, for a very very long term okay yeah fair enough so so that's all guys uh, for this episode uh, i want to thank you mr shivaji for coming Absolutely. here and uh, giving us your time and uh, we learned a lot we got to know about the best sectors which you are you know you and your chart supporting and uh, uh, you gave us a very good learning about how to see the charts and what are the points we should keep in mind and i also specifically like your point that as a new trader i should only put 10% of my capital and rest 90% should go into investing until i learn the dynamics of the market of course eventually i can increase the change the proportion and increase in trading so i'm i'm really really happy to you have you here thanks thanks for the opportunity and best wishes to your viewers thank you thank thanks. you thanks